Welcome to our channel. Today we're diving deep into a topic that's been gaining attention in the medical world, ivermectin, and its potential role in cancer treatment. We'll be answering some of the most frequently asked questions about this intriguing subject. So, let's get started. Here are detailed answers to each of the 30 questions about ivermectin in relation to cancer, dosage, and general information. General Questions About Ivermectin and Cancer First, let's explore some general questions about ivermectin and its relationship to cancer. Question 1. What is ivermectin and how does it work in the body? Ivermectin is primarily known as an antiparasitic medication. It works by binding to specific channels in parasites, leading to their paralysis and death. This makes it effective against various parasitic infections. Question 2. Why is ivermectin being studied as a potential cancer treatment? Interestingly, researchers have discovered that ivermectin might also affect cancer cells. It appears to interfere with pathways crucial for cancer cell survival, making it a potential candidate for cancer therapy. Question 3. What types of cancer might ivermectin be effective against? Studies suggest that ivermectin might be effective against breast cancer, colorectal cancer, glioblastoma, and ovarian cancer. However, more research is needed to confirm these findings in humans. Question 4. Is ivermectin approved for cancer treatment by the FDA? No, ivermectin is not approved by the FDA for cancer treatment. It is only approved for treating parasitic infections. Question 5. How does ivermectin interact with cancer cells differently than with parasites? In parasites, ivermectin targets their nervous system. But in cancer cells, it disrupts specific pathways that help the cells grow and survive. This different interaction is what makes it a potential cancer treatment. Question 6. Can ivermectin cure cancer? There is no conclusive evidence that ivermectin can cure cancer. While early studies are promising, more research is needed to determine its true effectiveness. Question 7. Are there any success stories of people using ivermectin to treat cancer? Some anecdotal reports suggest that ivermectin might help in certain cases, but these are not scientifically verified and should be taken with caution. Question 8. How is ivermectin different from traditional chemotherapy? Traditional chemotherapy targets rapidly dividing cells, which includes both cancerous and healthy cells. Ivermectin, on the other hand, seems to specifically target certain cancer cell pathways, potentially leading to fewer side effects. Question 9. What are the potential benefits of using ivermectin in cancer therapy? Potential benefits include targeting cancer-specific pathways, possibly reducing tumor growth, and being an inexpensive, widely available drug with a known safety profile at standard doses. Question 10. What are the risks of using ivermectin for cancer patients? Risks include potential side effects, drug interactions, and the possibility of delaying more effective proven treatments. Section 2. Dosage and Administration Questions Now let's talk about dosage and how ivermectin might be administered to cancer patients. Question 11. What is the typical dosage of ivermectin when used for cancer? There isn't a standard dosage for cancer treatment, as it's not approved for this use. Clinical trials vary in their dosages depending on the study. Question 12. How is ivermectin administered to cancer patients, orally, topically, etc.? Ivermectin is usually taken orally in tablet form. However, research is also exploring other forms like topical or intravenous administration depending on the type of cancer. Question 13. Can ivermectin be used in combination with other cancer treatments like chemotherapy or radiation? Yes, some studies are looking into combining ivermectin with other treatments to enhance effectiveness. However, this is still experimental. Question 14. What is the recommended duration of ivermectin treatment for cancer? There is no established treatment duration. 
Studies have used varying lengths of time, depending on the patient's response and side effects. Question 15. How does the dosage of ivermectin for cancer compare to its use for parasitic infections? The dosage for cancer is often higher than that used for parasitic infections, raising concerns about safety and side effects. Question 16. Are there any specific guidelines for adjusting ivermectin dosage in cancer patients? There are no specific guidelines yet. Doses in trials are adjusted based on patient tolerance and response to treatment. Question 17. What factors determine the appropriate dosage of ivermectin for a cancer patient? Factors include the patient's weight, cancer type and stage, liver and kidney function, and whether it's combined with other treatments. Question 18. Is it safe to take ivermectin daily for cancer treatment? The safety of daily ivermectin use for cancer is still being studied. It's not recommended outside of clinical trials due to the risk of side effects. Question 19. Can taking ivermectin at high doses be toxic? Yes, high doses of ivermectin can be toxic, potentially causing serious side effects like neurotoxicity and liver damage. Question 20. What should I do if I miss a dose of ivermectin while undergoing cancer treatment? If you miss a dose, consult your health care provider. Do not double up on the next dose to avoid increasing the risk of side effects. Section 3. Side Effects and Safety Questions Finally, let's cover the potential side effects and safety concerns. Question 21. What are the most common side effects of ivermectin when used in cancer treatment? Common side effects include nausea, vomiting, dizziness, and fatigue. Skin reactions like rashes and itching are also possible. Question 22. Are there long-term risks associated with using ivermectin for cancer? Long-term risks are not well understood yet. Potential concerns include liver and kidney damage, neurotoxicity, and drug resistance. Question 23. Can ivermectin cause liver or kidney damage in cancer patients? There is a risk, especially with long-term or high-dose use, so liver and kidney function should be monitored during treatment. Question 24. What are the signs of an allergic reaction to ivermectin? Allergic reactions can include hives, rash, itching, difficulty breathing, and swelling of the face or throat. Immediate medical attention is required if these occur. Question 25. Is ivermectin safe to use in elderly cancer patients or those with pre-existing health conditions? Host, voiceover. Ivermectin should be used cautiously in elderly patients or those with pre-existing conditions, as they may be more susceptible to side effects. Question 26. Can ivermectin interact with other medications used in cancer therapy? Yes, ivermectin can interact with other medications, potentially enhancing or reducing their effects. Always inform your doctor of all medications you're taking. Question 27. What precautions should be taken before starting ivermectin for cancer? Before starting ivermectin, a thorough medical evaluation is needed. This includes checking liver and kidney function and reviewing all current medications for potential interactions. Question 28. How closely should a patient be monitored while on ivermectin for cancer? Patients should be closely monitored for side effects, including regular blood tests to check liver and kidney function. Question 29. Can ivermectin affect the efficacy of other cancer treatments? Ivermectin might affect the efficacy of other treatments, either by enhancing their effects or causing harmful interactions. This is why it's important to use ivermectin only in controlled settings. Question 30. Is there any risk of developing resistance to ivermectin when used in cancer treatment? While resistance is a known issue in parasitic infections, it's unclear whether cancer cells can develop resistance to ivermectin. More research is needed to explore this possibility.
That's a wrap on our deep dive into ivermectin and its potential role in cancer treatment. Remember, while the research is promising, it's still early days. Always consult with your health care provider before considering any new treatment. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our future content. Thanks for watching. Thank you.